three. Hello, Margareta and Kerry. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm good, I'm good. It's so good to see you both. Um, so I am here with um, Margareta and Car Margareta Frederick and Kerry Dunn. And uh, Margareta is the, um, the chief curator at Delaware Art Museum in Wilmington, United States. And um, she is, she's Dr. Frederick. We are so honored to have you here um, by great happenstance. Um, and you serve as the curator of the museum's Samuel and Mary F. Bancroft collection of pre-Raphaelite art, which is one of the very rare collections of pre-Raphaelite art in the United States, which we are so excited to have you here. And um, as part of your expanded position, you'll lead the curatorial vision for the museum's centennial celebration. Um, so anyway, we're really excited to have you here and just feel very fortunate. And, it's exciting. Yes. And uh, Kerry Dunn, so excited to have you back on the podcast. I know we did a podcast before, but um, I just thought it would be really timely to do this again, um, to have you back as you are now curating the new pre raphaelites Illumination, which um, is a show that opens up um, next week on um, October 22nd at 6 p.m. We're having a virtual opening, and this is a... Um, a virtual opening of contemporary artists whose work all relates in some way to the ideas that the pre-Raphaelites held dear. Um, so these are all contemporary artists working today and um, it's based around the theme of illumination which has many meanings and could be interpreted very broadly. Um, but Kerry selected the artwork for um, the new pre-Raphaelites which is presented by Era Contemporary Gallery. And I'm so grateful to have you here, Kerry. Um, and Kerry is a, um, he's very involved in studio in Caminati. Um, that's his background as well as he teaches there. And he, he's also an amazing artist and he sells his work and he does commissions, portrait commissions. And, um, and he, he has also won many, many awards and um, including the best of show portrait society of America international portrait competition, which is no joke. So I'm just honored to be in the presence of you both. <laughs> so, um, so why don't we just kick off today by um, chatting with Margareta. If you just want to tell me, tell us like, what brought you to the, um, the Delaware Museum of Art and what, why did you get involved with the pre-Raphaelites? What was, what was like your interest in that? You know, I, I used to play the flute and my flute teacher said, I think there's something innate in everybody that just makes them attracted to one specific instrument, right? So for me, it was the flute. Mm -hmm. And similarly, I would say the same thing about the pre -Raphaelites. You know, I actually went to grad school thinking I was going to work on the Impressionists. And within one semester, I had switched to the pre -Raphaelites. So, and, and this is a period of art that isn't taught much in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in grad school in the history of art. So, um, you know, I grew up in Delaware. I knew this collection from when I was a child, and I guess it just kind of wouldn't let go. I got, I got mm. stuck in it. <laughs> yeah. awesome. Very cool. And where did you do your education at? Um, I got my master's and PhD at Bryn Mawr, so fairly local. Oh, very local. Very nice. Uh, I love Bryn Mawr. One of my favorite places. That's cool. Um, and and you are like the quintessential expert on the official original gangster pre-Raphaelites, um, which is really exciting because I feel like as painters, well, speaking for myself, like I really respond to like the intense emotion in the pre-Raphaelites. Um, but, and I, I have read many books about the pre-Raphaelites, but I'm not a scholar on the pre-Raphaelites. So in your scholarly opinion, what are some of like, the markers of a work that makes it classified as pre-Raphaelite? Okay. So firstly, if I'm thinking about big picture, the pre-Raphaelites, I think about the fact that they were painting um, second half of the 19th century, right at the moment that Britain is just full on experiencing the industrial revolution and the, their kind of entrance into the modern era. 
and all the change that went with that. And I think the overriding factor in all of the work is that they are responding to that change. And mm. so much of that change is our issues that we're still combating today, right? Um, the women's issue, pollution, industrial waste, uh, overcrowded cities, poor working conditions, um, and so on. So stylistically, they respond to that in different ways, each of these painters. They began as a group of seven painters, but they expanded quite quickly. And the, clearly they had touched a nerve in Victorian England because a great many artists joined them. So key things that you would see in their work at least in the beginning, there's a real focus on detail and mm -hmm. um, carefully documenting everything they see. I think the reason the landscape was one of the subjects they painted a lot was because the landscape was changing so quickly. Mm. This is when factories are just spreading throughout the landscape. It's when trains suddenly are crisscrossing what were once pristine uh, um, lands. Um, and similarly, in almost everything they did, this idea of documenting, I think was a way of recording something that was changing. Everything was changing. Even the roles of women were changing. I think that's why Dante Gabriel Rossetti painted these kind of fantasy views of women. Mm. He, was, he was so conflicted about what was going on that he, he, he kind of had to escape into these realms of, of um, kind of um, overwhelming womanhood, you know? Yes, that's such a great, um, <laughs> that's such a great description, overwhelming womanhood, because when I, when I stand in front of, especially Rossetti's works, um, there's one that I'm thinking in particular, I forget the name of it, but it's at the, um, it's at your museum, and it's, um, I think it's the woman combing her hair. It's Lady, it's Lady Willow, yeah. Yes, yes, she, it's all like very green, it's there's a lot, lot of hair. <laughs> yeah, like she has this beautiful hair, red hair, and like, there's so much greenery, and it's like, it's like it's like jewels like everywhere like they are there's these kind of hot house interiors that are filled with all these rich furnishings and then these beautiful women yeah mm -hmm. and i mean sometimes they're a little bit um you know women of our age are a bit put off by them because they're so in your face and they're so kind of um for the male gaze but i think if you think about Rossetti and what he was, he was really responding to this moment of change and, mm -hmm. and, um, and what was happening around him to the roles of women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Um, what do you, what do you think? Okay, so now I'm going to ask you some questions that I have had about the Pre-Raphaelites. Um, about the roles of women, so they, they also painted men, but I think that there was some, I think the themes have been predominantly about women, women in nature. Certainly, certainly the work that is uh, the most um, publicized, the things people think of first about the Pre-Raphaelites are, are women. And I see your show is absolutely reflecting this, just so many images of women. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I can't wait to hear more about what Carrie says about why he picked the ones he picked. Um, yeah and how that reflects on, on um, and, and comes back to how Rossetti picked. Um, they were really open to women and, and in a time when women couldn't even get into most of the leading art schools of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and they invite, mm, uh, um, included them in their group and they collaborated with them on their work. And often it was these relationships with the pre raphaelites that were the, the um, stepping stone into um, a professional career as an artist for many of these women. So it's kind of a funny duality. You have these kind of overly sexualized women by Rossetti, but then you know these are a group of men who actually were open to um, kind of inclusion, not exclusion. Yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful way of putting it. And I will say that even though much of the work is, okay, this is my personal feelings on it. I see that a lot of it is created by men, but, and that, yes, you definitely, there's definitely like the male gaze that's present. It's, there seems to be like, almost like a spiritual reverence for these women. There seems to be like this warmth. Um, it's not like totally, um, like it's not totally objectified, it feels like. Uh, what, I don't know, am I, am I off in that or? I, I think it depends on which of the pre-raphaelites we're talking yeah. about. 
I just, you know, Rossetti's women are portrayed like, you know, in all those warm, rich colors, you know, like Titian or Raphael. I mean, these aren't, at least, at least in the 1870s, these aren't cold, hard when even Lilith, who's who's you know Adam's first wife and kind of the man killer, I mean she's she's warm, she's not cold, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting, and I'm even thinking of probably the most famous pre-Raphaelite painting, arguably, which I think of as uh, Ophelia. Oh yeah, Millet. Yeah. That painting is so gorgeous. I was looking That's at a great it. painting. It's and you know that. Yeah, that's one where he's got the, you know, there's this, this, you know, kind of iconic female figure, but also the landscape, the stream is portrayed in such detail. I mean, you can practically identify the flowers. Mm -hmm. the, the, the way he painted the nature in, in, in that painting is yeah. one of the impressive aspects of it. It's not just an afterthought. It's, it's just as impressive as the figure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, so do you think that the pre-Raphaelites were trying to um, create change in their society um, or just create change within their own artistic group? Well, they were certainly trying to change up the, the, the British art world, no question. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean they, were, they were absolutely rebelling against the system for um, art training and for art exhibition. Um, which was largely through the academic system, through the Royal Academy. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, you know, it, certainly early on, they painted a number of social justice um, subjects. And I think for sure, you know, one of their big beefs about the Royal Academy was that they were painting things that were out of touch. And, how, you know, that the world was changing and the paintings on the walls of the Royal Academy didn't reflect any of that. They were just these kind of mm -hmm. sentimental, classic Victorian, you know, mm. girls with puppies paintings. <laughs> <Interesting>. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, I'm thinking of one. Um, who was it that painted a lot of social justice paintings? I think it was, was it Wil William Holman Hunt? Yeah, Holman Hunt definitely had a lot to say about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was an, he's an interesting one. I don't know that he's my favorite, like technically, although he has this one painting that's like, I could stare at for a long time. It's, it's him and, or not him, uh, it might've been him. Um, it was, it's like a shepherdess and like a shepherd boy. Um, mm -hmm. And and like all the sheep are like so perfectly rendered and like the sky is so blue and it's like, it really arrests you. It really just stops you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, so, uh, so yes, so there we have it. There's um, some of the aspects of pre-Raphaelitism and, um, and before we move on to um, to talk with Carrie, I would love to know, uh, Margareta, what are some of your favorite pre-Raphaelite paintings personally? Oh, wow, that is really, that's a hard thing to do. Which, like, which is, which is your favorite of your children? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a, there's a, a Rossetti, which you sort of might be thinking of when you were talking about all the greens called Veronica Veronese, which mm -hmm. is a painting I would gladly take home and live with for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. I'll have to look that up. Veronica Veronese. Okay. It's it's kind of um, it's like a symphony of greens. It's so mm -hmm. beautiful. And then she has red hair, and there's a yellow canary singing in the cage. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can picture it. I know which one you're talking about. That's awesome. Yes, so luscious, mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Margareta. And um, yeah, let's move on to Carrie. Carrie, um, talk to us about what um, what you like about the pre-Raphaelites and um, what your experience was like curating the show. Um, sure. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm, you know, the pre-Raphaelites is are a, 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 a certain, art, a, you know, a part of like academic painting in general. So I've never really been as solely focused on it as I think probably the two of you are very attracted to it. I mean, I definitely like mm -hmm. um, the pre-Raphaelites because um, it's just beautiful technical painting. Mm -hmm. uh, like I was looking at that painting of Ophelia just before we got on and it's it's just so, I mean, every, almost everybody knows that painting or, or have seen it even if they don't know what it is. Um, so certainly from a, a technical level, um, you know, it's, it's very enjoyable. Um, 
so I enjoy it for that reason. But it was interesting to hear Margareta kind of talking about the, you know, what attracted, you know, her to it. I'd be curious to hear also maybe you at some point, like what attracted you to it. Um, because, you know, I do, I, like, it's interesting because, you know, they were reacting to, you know, what was being created at the time, which was considered sentimental. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, so one of the things I'm still kind of wondering is if, um, I mean, I love a lot of the work that we chose for the show and I think it's great. I kind of see the pre-Raphaelites almost as like a, a style or an aesthetic. Mm-hmm. And I think that I'm, I'm still, and, and um, I think it has its place and I'm kind of curious like what it is about um, the pre-Raphaelites that still resonates with people today because I think some people will look at it and think, well, because when I look at it, I think, oh, it looks a little sentimental to me. Mm-hmm. You know, but so it was interesting to hear Margareta talking about how it was a reaction against the sentimental work of today. So we're looking at it with new eyes, like we don't have the same eyes they had back then. So, so I, I'm kind of interested in. Uh, um, I'm not answering your question quite. The way. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna be you know, babbling, but um, you know, but I don't know. It's, it's interesting to me because like there's this weird place where both it you know from today's eyes it seems maybe sentimental and you know the male gaze and some of these things that we were talking about that i wonder if contemporary you know eyes would be like oh i don't you know that's so not what we're about today where you know but if you know a little bit more about the history which was what margareta was talking about um it was and, and during its day it's a, it was addressing a lot of the same concerns that we that we're addre- trying to address today so um that was actually eye-opening to me. Um, and I'd actually like to, you know, if we would get a chance to peel that back a little bit more, maybe. Um, yeah. Just, um, you know, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the sentimental aspect. So I actually, um, like, when do, when do the pre-Raphaelites end? Because it seems like to me, a lot of, a lot of um, artists have like, like they picked up the ideas from the pre-Raphaelites and it seems to me like- During artists- aesthetic, right? Yeah, it seems to me that they were working with like a lot of the same themes and a lot of the same styles until like the 1940s or so. Am I, 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 you know what really ends it is World War One. Oh, I think beauty and, and you know kind of fantasy after World War One. I. I mean, mm-hmm. okay, all right. So like, like the 20s. Yeah. Yeah. 1910, 1920s. Yeah, right up until it's funny because there are there's a whole bunch of late like late 19th, early 20th century painters painting in a pre-Raphaelite style, but then mm-hmm. the war comes. Right, right. Yeah, it's kind of like that, that, um, that I don't know, there's a bit of like an innocent dream to it, which um, yeah. I think, I think is part of the appeal, at least for me. It's right. like this, um, this world where, not in, not in all of the paintings, obviously, but there's, there's a lot of focus, it seems, on um, storytelling, and a lot of the storytelling is like mythical. Like they harken back to to myths, to legends, and um, so it creates this like really magical feel. And it's like so intense that it really pulls you in, and it makes you feel like it could be real. And they portray the emotions of the people in these things with such intensity and with such skill that for me, it's very magnetic. It just like pulls me in. And um, right. yeah, I, I think that's part of the appeal, Carrie, yeah, for me anyway. Makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's funny cause it's like, like, uh, um, like I don't, I wouldn't say I'm a huge fan of, of pre-Raphaelites. I mean, I definitely like the work and I appreciate it. Um, and I, I like, them. I can see why people are attracted to it, you know, because it, it engages your imagination and, um, you know, kind of takes your mind off into this other place. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, fantasy or escapism. Um, and I like that too. I, I think maybe if I were to be a pre-Raphaelite, I, go, I might go a little darker. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, uh, but I do, you know, I, I think the, you know, anytime you're engaging the imagination, it's, it's, it's a, definitely a, a fun world to, to, to play around in. Yeah, well, some of them, um, I think, did a lot of extreme things to try to get the aesthetic and even the storytelling um, again, I'm thinking of William, William Holman Hunt. Didn't he go to like these long journeys into the desert and stuff? He did go to the Middle East, yeah, to wow. make sure that his biblical scenes would be accurate. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, interesting. I respect that. That's great. That's, it's like going on, on a vision quest or something. You know, that's real. That's really commitment. That's that's pretty. That's awesome. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. So, um, so what do you guys think about like the pre-Raphaelites today, and how does how do how do some of the works that you selected carry? Um, what what were you looking for? What were you looking for? Even if you take the word pre-Raphaelite out of it, what were you looking for as you were selecting the works? Sure. Uh, um, well, I definitely had some of your your help with this because um, uh, this is your baby, um, uh, and I was asked to come on and and uh, and, and um, so so definitely the the you know the aesthetic and the and the um, the principles of the pre-Raphaelites were were something that were or a guiding guided a lot of our Mm -hmm. sort of choosing and perusing all the all the artwork um and i think we were both pretty you know impressed with the quality of work that came in like mm -hmm. uh, we so because i know from what i've what i've been reading about the pre-raphaelites is that you know the technical craft is something they cared a lot about it was like kind of like one of one of their principles mm -hmm. um and so me being an academic painter i'm you know i'm going to be have an eye for that type of excellence mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so going through all, you know, so certainly that's going to be one of the major driving forces is, is, you know, is the, is the craftsmanship really top notch. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, so I think we were both pretty impressed with the, with the quality. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one thing. Um, and then, you know, it's been, it's been, you know, and then of course, like every now and then there'll be a piece where you're like, oh, does this fit or does this not fit? And we didn't agree on everything. So, um, um, and so when I wasn't sure, I would kind of lean on you a little bit and be like, well, what do you think? And then, um, and, uh, and then sometimes the question, well, is this pre-Raphaelite would, you know, would often come into the conversation, right? It's like, well, I love it, but is it pre-Raphaelite or, or it's very pre-Raphaelite, but I don't know, you know, so, um, it's, it was kind of a combination of, of just, you know, craftsmanship, gut reaction, does it fit in with the aesthetics of pre raphaelites So it was kind of a mixture of all those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's those are some great insights. And I think those are some great points for um, artists who are listening, who maybe like they're frustrated with like, if they're applying to shows or they're not getting in and stuff. Like, I think the things that you said, like the, the if the work is appropriate to the theme is a really big factor because you want the, sh the show to like reflect the theme but then also like you want it to reflect the craftsmanship um and i don't know yeah i i think those are great thanks carrie i might say one other thing real quick yeah uh, which is that what's something i learned from this process and anybody who's it's just like a lot of artists out there i've been in many competitions and you get rejections a lot and then sometimes you get in and sometimes you get an award or something but doing something like this, you get to see how the sausage is made, so to speak, you know, it's, you know, and I think it's even helped me to kind of, I enjoyed it because I started to see, okay, this is what it's like to look at artwork through the eyes of a gallery. Mm -hmm. you, know, you kind of look, you, you look at it differently than when you're on the outside, you know, so, um, you know, I started, I found myself um, liking pieces in the process of this show that I might not be my cup of tea when I'm just in my own little world. Mm -hmm. I thought that I thought looking at it through that through those glasses was a, a, a good experience for me. Yeah, definitely. And Margareta, um, when you are curating um, pieces together, how do you select? Because I know that you, I know that you work with the pre-Raphaelites, but what are some recent projects that you've worked on that have been like a curatorial experience? Well, for me, if I'm doing a special, a show kind of linked to the collection, but not necessarily entirely of the collection, um, I'm really interested in um, those who have received less uh, attention. Uh, and there's, that's the great thing about British art and um, Victorian art is there are, is lots of work still to be done. Mm. Um, so it's funny how, and particularly women, because women kind of got written out of the canon there. Um, for a bit, and the pre-raphaelites were seven men when they first started in 1848. Mm -hmm. um, but um, again, when when I'm looking at, 
for instance, the work of a female artist who's, who has not gotten a lot of, a lot of press, so to speak, definitely um, um, technical ability is, is super important. Mm -hmm. um, but also um, how that work relates to these kind of themes we've been talking about today. So interesting to hear uh, Carrie speak about um, picking these artists for this show because I'm doing the same thing when I'm when I'm you know re, re resuscitating uh, some artist whose work has been kind of lost to history. Mm. I'm thinking, how how does this play into all these things we already know of, about pre raphaelitism Yeah, I just want to say, um, as I look through some of the things that um, I, that are are in the show, I, there's a couple of themes I just wanted to kind of ask Carrie about that kind of show up to me. Ooh, yes, let's get into it. <laughs> sort of started talking about it, Jessica, about the fact that there's um, a kind of a narrative and you get sucked into that narrative, whether it's a, um, a work of literature or what that was the subject or whatever. I see a lot in these, um, they, may, they may not be, there may not be a specific story that these artists are writing about, but the images are suggesting a narrative, suggesting something that's going on there um, and, and that you don't really know um, um, what the specifics are of that story. That was very much a big thing in the Victorian time. Um, they were called Victorian problem pictures. You oh, the scene. And that's then, cool. It is. And then Victorian, the audience would kind of try and Put that story together from from what the details that the artist gave you know and um, where that sounds fun yeah but there's several here where i i want to know more you know i want to <laughs> know uh, more about what's happening um the other thing is um you know these really were fantasy things I, and i think that comes under the heading in pre raphaelite times of kind of escapism i mean i mean um certainly the times in which they were living were so very different and such a big change that I think, especially for painters like uh, Edward Byrne Jones and for decorators and designers like William Morris, they were really kind of looking back to the past as a time that wasn't now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like kind of like um, idealizing the past a bit. Yeah, and just going somewhere that wasn't the present. Mm, okay, I see. Yeah, I always say they didn't find inspiration in what was going on in the art world of the day, so they looked to earlier times to find inspiration. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, I, just, I see a lot of, you know, here I see a lot of kind of escapist um, things that Carrie's but you know, kind of, um, yeah. And then hyper realist things, which I love. So, mm -hmm. which yeah. Is that too. Yeah, there's some of the paintings in there that I, I've like just like blown up on my computer and like stared yeah. at. Because I'm like, wow, that must have taken forever. Like, that's so amazing. So, yeah. I have a question for you, actually. And that is, um, for those people who are wondering, like, where does the, where does the name Pre-Raphaelite come from? And what does it mean? Right. It is a little confusing. Mm -hmm. um, it's curators crazy. Um, so uh -huh. they, they not finding inspiration in the art of their time. They look to the art before the time of Raphael. So pre raphaelite So they were really looking at what we would call early Italian art and what they sort of referenced as medieval, big heading, medieval anything before Raphael. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Amazing. Yes. And um, so that's part of the reason that, um, so this is the second show that was themed the pre raphaelites for Eric Contemporary. And um, so we made it a little different with the theme illumination. And part of that is because pre-Raphaelite, like before Raphael, like there was a lot of illuminated manuscripts and, um, and so that's of, medieval, right? That's yeah. very medieval. And they were definitely um, mm -hmm. inspired by the medieval period. And you're right, maybe they were, um, they didn't have an accurate view of the medieval period, but certainly <laughs> to them, it was the time of the guild system where artists worked together and there was collaboration and, you know, um, I think all of that was very different from what was going on at the Royal Academy. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and I have I have another question too for you, and that is about the pre-Raphaelites and their um, their community, and um, they are often known for their kind of tempestuous um, personal lives and 
um, kind of like unusual lifestyles and um, and they all kind of like knew each other and like they like married each other and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a reality TV show. <laughs> well, they did make a TV show about it. <laughs> it was pretty close to reality TV. Um, <laughs> so, um, my I'll question just, is: Yeah, go ahead. My question is: um, How important do you think that 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 like closeness was um, in creating the very specific aesthetic of the pre-Raphaelites? Do you think that that com like that um, that closeness of all these artists? Do you think that that um, helped them create these really charged paintings. Wow, I never really thought of it that way. Um, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, we know a lot, of, we just happen to know a lot about their personal lives. I, I don't know, I, and I'm, I'm thinking that, um, if we knew as many details about everyone else's personal lives, we probably wouldn't think this was that different. I don't know. It's not <laughs> my life, but, uh, but right. you know, for some reason, the historical record has really preserved um, mm -hmm. their kind of dalliances, for lack of a better word, um, mm -hmm. in a big way. Yeah. And the other thing I would just say, you know, they were really um, bent on depicting real people, not not as opposed to kind of the model, you know? So they would often find their models uh, on the street or use each other because these were real people. Um, and I don't know if that had anything to do with the way the figures in their paintings are portrayed. Mm, yeah. The, the red hair, the red hair was so unpopular at the time. It was actually a sign of kind of, for lack of a better word, sort of sluttiness. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it was, you know, in a woman, it was wanton. It was not good. Also bad luck. Um, mm -hmm. But um, it just happened that certainly early on, Rossetti's model, muse, lover, finally wife, Elizabeth Siddle, had red hair. Mm -hmm. um, and then they started painting more women with red hair. I think in a way they were kind of trying to establish a new kind of beauty, a new, mm -hmm. new, new. Right. I love that. They're, they were kind of pushing back against the stereotypes of the day, maybe. Yeah. Actually, Carrie, we had this discussion as we were picking out. I remember specifically, you were like, let's choose this one because, because it's not a stereotypical standard of beauty for a woman. Do you did remember? I, did I say that? Cause it, yeah, you did. So, that was good. I really, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remember which, which piece it was for? Um, I, I do. I do. Um, it was it was um, Helene. Oh yeah, yeah. But but even um, the Our Lady of the Dead Flowers, you know that that it, it, she's beautiful because she's iconic, you know. But she's not necessarily what what people think of as beautiful. Right, like a Victoria's Secret model or something it, like that. There you go. Right, right, right. And, and I find that with all of the women here. They're all very powerful women. And, and they that, are. Yeah, that's interesting. That is, yeah, that is definitely, and you know, say what you want about Rossetti's women, but they're going to kick somebody's butt, okay? Mm -hmm. Those are powerful yes. women, you know? They're, yeah. They're no, yeah, they're no weeping daisies. Well, there, there are a lot of the paintings in the show are self-portraits that the artists have submitted. Yeah, that's great. So, um, and I, I, I see it. I love self-portraits that artists do because they do have like this sense of like intimacy with the self and like a power to them that um, is really powerful. I have a book of self-portraits by artists and I like looking through it because there's something about them. It's just very arresting, so. I wanted yeah. to ask, there are a couple of them where the figure is pressed quite close to the figure plane, the front of the, fig the, front of the picture plane, like the young King Midas. That's a very pre raphaelite thing to do. The figure is kind of almost coming out of the painting at you. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wondered if that was something you were kind of thinking about when you were when you, when you were picking these. Carrie, I, I, I wasn't super aware of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Now we are. <laughs> <laughs> Now that you mention it, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I mean, there's, there's, there's yeah. 
Uh, oh, Carrie, I wanted to ask you something. Um, and that is um, your experiences, because Carrie, you paint from life and a lot of your models are like people that you know that you already have relationship with. And so, um, but sometimes you do hire models. So would you speak to like um, how that experience is? And do you feel like there's a difference in like the quality of your work or the, um, the intensity of your work when you work with somebody that you know? I think, yeah, actually when, when that was just brought up, I, I, I definitely latched onto that, that idea as we were talking about it um, because um, uh, Caravaggio apparently, you know, brought in, I don't know, I don't know if this is totally accurate or not, but I, you know, my understanding of his work and why it was so powerful is, you know, it's because he brought in models, you know, and, and people he knew and wasn't working with these archetypes quite so much. And so it lended this whole new reality or sense of realism to what he was doing, you know, in painting saints where you see the bottom bottoms of the feet, which was like totally controversial for the time. And, um, but I think it's that realism, you know, it makes it, I think there's something about, I mean, you can paint from somebody you don't know, and then you're sort of inventing what you, what you know about them, or, um, which you're probably doing no matter what, even if you do know the person as well. But, you know, when you, when you, when you spend time with somebody, you, you kind of get to know their interior world more, mm -hmm. and I think you can bring more of that out in the, in the, in the, in the depiction of them. And I, I think that can, uh, you know, just gives it more depth probably. So if you're eating, so it's a nice marriage between a fantasy, you know, storytelling and it makes it more real at the same time. And so I, I think that that's, those are two things that will make the story much more powerful. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very just eloquent, Carrie. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Cool. So, um, so, so Margareta, tell us about the museum. What's on at the museum next? Um, where can people see your work, um, your curation efforts? And um, yeah, what is, there, what is there to be excited about at the Delaware Museum of Art right now? Well, the museum just reinstalled um, our entire ground floor gallery. So um, that's really, that includes the Pre-Raphaelites, also American art and illustration. Um, mm -hmm. So that's super exciting. Um, we're just about to open an exhibition, which kind of recreates um, an exhibition in the 1970s. Definitely. Really? Of, um, it was put on, it was curated by uh, an African-American artist, and it was entirely African-American artists, both cool. national and regional. And so many of the artists Great. that are in this show are artists that are household names today. Faith Ringgold or um, you know, people like that. So, so it's um, and it's kind of a forgot. It was a forgotten exhibition. I mean, that this took place at this time in Wilmington. So it's uh, it opens uh, a week from Saturday, and uh, uh, it's going to be just a fantastic show. Our contemporary curator has been working on this show for probably almost ten years. And what is um what is the name of this show? African-American images. Okay. It sounds, sounds incredible. Oh, it's terrific. Yeah. And how long will that be up for? Uh, let's see. More than, a, more than a month, right? Absolutely. Oh, it'll be up for several months. Okay, great. And, um, and you guys have an open, you're free for visitors on Sundays. Is that right? We are. We are indeed. Hey. It's called African Afro-American Images 1971, The Vision of Percy Ricks, and it's open through January, October 24th through January 23rd of next year. Amazing. Very cool. And your um your reinstallation of the pre raphaelite sounds amazing as well. That's great. Yeah, thank you. And um and for the um illumination, the new pre raphaelites um that is going to be an online show. So um, due to the Delta variant concerns, um, the place where we were going to host it um, elected not to, because we were planning it in the middle of the summer at the height of kind of some issues happening worldwide. And um, so we decided to make it virtual. And um, so that is all virtually available now. And actually um, just, just created the virtual galleries. So. Um, so we use a really cool company, Exhibit, 
and you can you can go on to ericcontemporary.com and you can explore the virtual gallery now and you can look all around and you can um, you can like use your mouse to like explore um, kind of like a video game and it's it's very cool um, so that is all up there and then the the actual opening for it where all the artists are going to speak about their work um, so we're going to have a zoom opening and that's going to be on friday october 22nd and um and we're super excited for that i know that um molly your director is going to be there which is super exciting and um carrie will be there i'll be there and then all the artists are going to be there as well so it should be should be a fun time and just a really a celebration of kind of reviving some of the ideas of the pre-raphaelites and um so yeah, it should be really good. Um, so thank you so much, Margareta. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with us today? No, well, thank, thank you for having me. It's wonderful to see the pre raphaelites still being celebrated. Yes, of course. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And, um, and Kerry, thank you so much for joining me again today. And is there anything that you wanted to share? Um. No, <laughs> but ex except that I, I'm looking forward to coming to the Delaware Art Museum soon. And <laughs> Margaret, I'd love to say hello when I'm there because now that I know that it's the, it said it's one of the largest pre Raphaelite collections or the, I'm not sure. Well, in the US. In the US. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're a fan. Actually, yeah, very little pre Raphaelite art in the US. So we're it. <laughs> I see. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would love to go see that. Uh, um, other than that, you know, paint on. Yeah. So. Awesome. Uh, all right, guys, um, all of the links for the, um, the events um, for the Delaware Museum of Art and then also for um, Eric Contemporary's pre-Raphaelite show, they're all going to be in the link in um, the show notes. So you can just look around here and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to put those in there for you guys to check out. But thank you guys so much. It was so nice to meet you, Margareta, and so nice to see you, Carrie. And um, thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you, Jessica. Bye.